Hey everyone, Dr. Lewis Crenn here with another COVID-19 vaccine update. Today, we're gonna to start to answer the question, can the COVID-19 vaccines prevent you from getting infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus? I think this is an important question to answer because there's still a lot of people out there that are skeptical of the vaccine. And one of their comments or one of their concerns is, well, if I'm still gonna get the virus anyways, why take the vaccine, especially when the virus is only fatal in around 2% of people. Now, I think there's a lot of faulty logic in that statement, but I'm hoping this additional data that we're starting to see will help convince a few more people to reconsider taking the vaccine. I think there's also an opportunity in this data to guide future public health guidelines for those of us that have been vaccinated. All right, let's get started. Okay, if you think back to when the vaccines first got approved and everybody was throwing around statistics like 94% effective, 95% effective, I'm not sure that most people, at least in the beginning, really knew what that meant. Everybody was really excited about the vaccines being super effective and momentum started to gain behind them. They got approved really fast. And then people started to figure out what that 94, 95% effective meant. And I think it actually started to work against some of those that were skeptical about the vaccine. So let's talk about first what that 94, 94% statistics meant. Initially, when both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were approved in the United States, that statistic actually pertained to how effective they were at preventing moderate to severe disease, not at how effective they were at preventing you from getting infected with SARS-CoV-2 in the first place. A lot of people started to use that information to point out a reason why they shouldn't get vaccinated then. A lot of people were starting to get down on the vaccines because, again, like I said earlier, they were throwing up their hands going, well, if I'm still going to get sick, what use is the vaccine? Well, there's a lot of use in it, frankly, uh, with as many people that are susceptible to the vaccine, essentially the entire population, because this is a novel vaccine. That's potentially hundreds of thousands, potentially even in the millions of people, even with a 1% fatality rate, that could get sick and die. So having a vaccine that essentially prevented almost 100% of people from dying from this virus was truly remarkable. And that's why a lot of us in medicine, a lot of the scientists involved in this research got super excited. But then it was natural for people to then turn their attention to, well, but I'm still going to get sick. And yes... The early studies did not look at whether you were still going to get sick or not. They simply focused on that moderate to severe disease. So that was a claim that a lot of people who were skeptical of the vaccine started making as a rationale for deciding not to take the vaccine in the first place. Well, recently, we've started to have some new data surface that actually does look at whether or not these vaccines can prevent you from getting sick. So why is that important? Well, it's important because we know about 50% of infections come from asymptomatic individuals. That's one of the nasty features of this virus is it can make you sick even before the person who's making you sick knows it. So it was a legitimate concern wanting to know whether or not the viruses were gonna keep you from getting an asymptomatic infection and potentially spreading it to others you might be around, especially if those who got vaccinated started to be a little bit lax with wearing their mask and keeping their distance like we've been concerned and hopefully continuing to reiterate to people not to do. Well, some of this new data coming out on both Pfizer and Moderna and some data on Johnson & Johnson as well is showing that not only do these vaccines do extremely well at preventing moderate to severe disease, but it's looking like they're gonna prevent asymptomatic infection as well. Now I will mention, that this data has not yet been peer-reviewed, at least not the Pfizer data. It's coming out of Israel in a preprint study that is being touted by the Pfizer company as well as other scientists who have had access to the information. And it's showing up to 94% effectiveness at preventing asymptomatic infection, meaning you don't get the virus in the first place. Also, recently, an addendum was posted to the Moderna data that was submitted to the FDA from their original trials, actually, that showed up to 91% effectiveness at preventing asymptomatic infection as well. Now, one of the key things to point out, at least in the Moderna data, is that trial was done 
without prevalence of the new UK variant that seems to be taking a hold in the United States as well as some of the other variants out there. The Pfizer data, however, was done in Israel where the UK variant was actually prevalent at the time. And since these two vaccines have been extremely equal in just about every study we've seen, there's no reason to doubt the Moderna data, even with the UK variants that are currently around. Now, the Johnson & Johnson data was also taken from studies with the variants that are currently circulating, and their effectiveness at preventing asymptomatic infection or preventing you from getting sick with SARS-CoV-2 in the first place was 74%. Still, very good. If you compare this to the annual flu shots we get, which are anywhere from 40 to 60% effective every year, that's remarkable. So I hope this information helps to convince even those that are skeptical and commonly use the rationale of, well, if the vaccine's not gonna prevent me from getting sick, why bother? Here's some good information showing that not only will the vaccines prevent you from getting severely ill, but it looks like they're also gonna prevent you from getting sick in the first place. Fantastic news. Now, what does this mean for those of us that have already been vaccinated? Well, I think it means in the future, we're gonna see additional revisions to the public health guidance that actually we've already seen some changes from. If you remember my video from last week, where we talked about the do's and don'ts of what you can do after you're vaccinated and the CDC actually starting to recommend relaxing some of those restrictions for people who have been vaccinated. I'm hopeful that as more and more people become vaccinated and we continue to see data from these trials showing primary endpoints of preventing disease in the first place, I think we'll start to see some continued relaxing of those guidelines. But don't start to relax those restrictions just yet. We know the variants that are out there are starting to pose some problems, especially for those who haven't been vaccinated yet, and we still have a large percent of the population that hasn't been. And if we look to what's happening in Europe right now, they're starting to see a little bit of a surge again because they've started to relax some of their restrictions perhaps too soon. We're seeing that in the U.S. as well. If you look to states like Texas and other areas around the country, where I think they're getting a little bit ahead of relaxing those restrictions, and unfortunately, we may see a resurgence of the virus here as well. So please continue to follow all the current public health guidelines. Don't start to get too comfortable. Not yet. All right. That's just a quick update for today. I hope you've enjoyed the information, and I hope you continue to enjoy these videos. Please consider liking the video. It helps other people see it. I hope you'll also consider subscribing to my channel so you can catch future videos. And if you don't mind, leave me a comment down below and let me know how your journey through COVID-19 and this pandemic has gone. And as always, be safe out there.